My name is Baird Tarpley. Uh, for two years I was a telephony agent and case manager at Universal Credit. There's those old Looney Tunes cartoons where it's Bugs Bunny or whoever in a boat and holes keep springing up and they keep plugging finger after finger into these holes. It's not the individual holes that are the issue, it's a bad boat. And that, to me, sort of sums up Universal Credit. Universal credit. Universal credit. Universal credit. We've rolled six benefits into one. From December, six benefits will be merged into one. The Prime Minister promised to stand up for families who are just managing. You do not underfund it as it goes in. It seems like nobody knew what they were doing. Horrible. They're left with very little. Getting people into work, and that is what Universal Credit is doing. The National Audit Office says Universal Credit could end up costing more than the system it replaces. It's being used to cut people's benefits. The system is not working and it really needs to be rethought fundamentally. People spoke, I listened. That's universal credit, from the outside at least. But this is the story of what it's like behind the closed doors of the system. When you apply for universal credit, there's three sort of steps that you have to go through. You universal register. credit. When you make a claim, you're eligible for a new claim advance within the first month. There's different month things you can do on the journal. It's where people will upload evidence. It's where we post them letters. Bear uh, Tarpley sort of spent two years working inside universal credit. He has an encyclopedic knowledge of the system, its processes, how claims work, how people get paid, the winners and the losers, the good and the bad. This is the first time any universal credit agent has spoken openly on camera, and his assessment is damning. I think certainly from a frontline position, um, I wasn't particularly confident that Universal Credit was meeting that goal of, of helping people in work and making them better off based on their circumstances. From this call centre in Grimsby, Bayard says changes to the system occurred daily, but not necessarily for the benefit of the claimant. It was things like making it easier for us to process things or making it easier for us to end a call sooner or changing who does what job so that we can quickly get through things. There didn't seem to be a lot of changes that were specifically there to support claimants with particular problems that were being raised. So it was all about getting them off the phone as quickly as possible? So there was there's something called the deflection script, which is within your booth, you have a, a piece of paper that explains what to do when someone calls in, and the first thing you do is ask them what their call is about. And based on that, you would tell them to do it online, write a message to their case manager in their journal, make the change themselves, and you would explain all of that. Even if it's something that you could do quite quickly over the phone, even if they've been waiting on hold for an hour and 15 minutes, um, you were um, encouraged to do everything in your power to get them to hang up the phone and, and do that online. This is exactly how Universal Credit is meant to work, online. To make it simpler, cheaper to run, claimants have to do a lot for themselves with very little help. The problem is, in 2015, the Treasury cut a major element out of Universal Credit. Within Universal Credit, as with tax credits, there's an amount of money that you get to earn before your tax credits start being reduced. So it's similar to the personal allowance for tax. One of the big cuts that was made in the budget was that that work allowance, as it's called, was removed completely for some people and was massively reduced for other people. And what that means is that for a lot of working families particularly, as soon as they move on to universal credit, they will be worse off. In work poverty is already a massive problem for millions. New figures from the Joseph Rowntree Foundation show that four million workers are now locked in poverty. That's a rise of half a million in the last five years. That's the highest rate in 20 years. And this is crucial. While employment is rising, the number of workers in poverty is rising at a faster rate. And this is the opportunity for the Chancellor to put that money back into universal credit and show that he wants to give that living standards boost to 10 million parents and children who really need to see a benefit from the government. This is Mansfield in Nottinghamshire. Once supported by the coal industry, is now struggling with the lack of it. 28% of children here live in poverty. Universal credit rolled into town last month. It's, it's just hard, um, especially when you're on your own. You, you know, you're trying to balance everything that's already hard anyway. It's a struggle. Sam Fragley is a working single mum. 
What she earns doesn't cover what she needs to live. And she's worried that universal credit could make her worse off. It made me feel like I was failing, even though I was trying my best. Living day to day like this, mm. do you think that's acceptable in 21st century? No, it shouldn't be at all. There should be nobody like us. Nobody's struggling in this day and age. And you couldn't have predicted what was about to happen? No, not at all. No. A few months ago, Sam had to suddenly quit work and go off sick. The next time I saw her, I'd find out why. Universal credit is calculated on a monthly basis. It's done based on what they call an assessment period, which for everybody is slightly different, but it's always a one month period based on when you made your claim, what date you made your claim on. It doesn't always mirror the way that people are paid from work or other benefits that they're receiving or any other income that they're receiving or the way that their lives are structured. And because of the way that universal credit is, in theory, constantly based on your real-time circumstances, that can sometimes mean that for reasons that claimants don't always understand, suddenly they don't get a payment one month because we say that they've earned too much. And that's catching a lot of people out. About half an hour north of Mansfield is Bassett Law. Uh, Sherwood Forest divides the two places. A year ago, universal credit was ruled out there, and ever since then, there have been huge problems. Most of the people who come into this food bank are in work and on universal credit. What we're now seeing with people that are on universal credit is the constant changes to those payments. Uh, if they have any changes in circumstances, they have to put it on their journal and it affects the payments. The main causes are people that are mostly employed, zero hour contracts, minimum wage, can't make ends meet. Um, it's, you know, rising food costs, fuel costs, everything that goes with it. Working um, families? Working families, yeah, young families. But some people might say, you've got to learn the system. It's, it's, you can't just sit back and expect the system to support you. If you need to get online, you get online. If you need to learn the system, learn the system. You know you're going to get sanctioned, avoid it. Yeah. Is that is that fair? Um, no, I don't think it's fair. I think in a general picture of normal living life, yes, but for chaotic lives, they may not have access to the internet. Um, they may not have access to a computer. Um, they may not have the ability, the IT skills. They may not have an online bank account, never used an online bank account. It's all that education. It's a bigger, bigger spectrum. As an agent, you would receive calls from people who were in a vulnerable situation, who were at wit's end trying to figure out what was happening with their payments, people who had gotten conflicting answers, and that would be um, in a variety of forms of, of people being distressed, crying, shouting, insisting on speaking to a manager. Daily? Monthly? Weekly? In some form, I would, I would say I think daily. You would, you would have... You would, you would have an angry customer, you would have an upset customer, you would have someone who was vulnerable, someone who was distressed in, in some way. Um, and was the system designed, do you say, to support those people who were ringing up going, I cannot understand what I'm doing? I, I don't think enough was done to support people who were in those positions. He was a single parent. He raised me and my sister on his own. That's how the whole benefits system started for him. Brian Bailey was born with a foot deformity. In May, he was told he would lose his disability benefit and move on to universal credit. He was suffering panic attacks. He didn't want to go to his appointments. He was crying. He was worried about money. He was worried about losing his flat. It was very rare he could get through to actually speak to a human being. On July the 17th, on the day he was due to attend an appointment with the Universal Credit Manager, Brian locked himself in his house, went up to his bedroom and took his own life. He was 59. I know it's hard to say for sure, but do you think that the struggles he had with Universal Credit contributed to what he did? He was under a lot of pressure from the benefits agency. He was getting constant letters, constant text messages, check your journal, the appointments, having to go in, having to see the work coach. He was just getting fed up. He just said it was like a merry-go-round that he couldn't get off. 
towards the end of my time there, there were stand-up meetings, which were once a day, and there were team meetings, which were once a week. And those would tend to be when your manager would reveal there was going to be a change. Either people were moving teams, or you were going to change jobs slightly, or we were going to start doing this and stop doing that. Um, say this when you're speaking to claimants, don't say this when you're speaking to claimants, and that could change day to day, week to week, month to month. So a rapidly changing environment that you have to work in, understand, and communicate to claimants. Yes, yes. It, was, it was constantly changing, and it was very difficult to stay on top of that as an agent, never mind also having to communicate that to people claiming. The Department for Work and Pensions said claims of a deflection script were completely false, but added that when handling a query, call agents may use aids to help them effectively process cases, including directing claimants online in relation to their claim. A DWP spokesperson said, We take the training of our call handling staff extremely seriously to ensure they are prepared to handle a range of inquiries regardless of how long they might take. There is no policy to get callers off the phones. There are a lot of reasons why the whole benefit system needs to work. For some, it's a safety net. Remember Sam? She's been on sick leave since May. I wanted to catch up with her at home. The thing about Sam is, she's not sick. Lovely to see you again. It's her son Jacob who's sick. In May he was diagnosed with bone cancer, and even though he was given only a 30% chance of survival, Sam was told she'd have to wait three months for disability living allowance. The family ended up turning to a food bank. I think it's disgusting. There's no support. We weren't, we weren't given a choice in this. You know, we didn't ask for this. Jacob didn't, you know, we didn't do anything wrong for it to happen to us, but we were left in that circumstance where we just had to get on with it. And there should be a support network out there that that helps in that circumstance. And in a crisis, because that's it was a crisis. And within a week, our family got turned upside down. Universal credit is the biggest change to the welfare system in a generation. In response to growing criticisms, the Department for Work and Pensions says it will slow down the rollout of universal credit. But the scale of opposition is growing. One of the most powerful committees in Parliament, the Public Accounts Committee, says universal credit is causing unacceptable hardship to claimants. And in addition to that, the Department has been accused of persistently dismissing concerns raised by those on the front line. If you're a family reliant on zero-hour contracts, mum might be on maternity leave. Dad doesn't know how many, or mum doesn't know how, how many, many hours yeah. she's going to get from week to next. Yeah. They are the victims in all of yes. this. Yes, yes. They're the ones that's working really hard to keep that family unit together. The, the, the type the of people ones... that the Prime Minister says work should pay. Yeah, well, work should pay. Um, but, you know, it, they're working really, really hard. Um, and some of them have fallen at the first hurdle. And um, it's really sad to watch because they are out there working. In its current form, Universal Credit would leave more than three million families worse off than they are under the old tax credit system. And that was never the intention of Universal Credit. It was always supposed to improve living standards to make working more worthwhile for people. I think the whole system's chaotic. I really do. They don't point you in the right direction. I don't think they give you enough support. I don't think there's enough one-on-one -on -one human interaction. There's those old Looney Tunes cartoons where it's Bugs Bunny or whoever in a boat and holes keep springing up and they keep plugging finger after finger into these holes. It's not the individual holes that are the issue, it's a bad boat. And that, to me, sort of sums up Universal Credit.